is K Radio, radio for the people, man. And um, you know how we do it right here. The open book. We have real honest conversations. Good afternoon. My name is Pops. And uh, today's conversation. Yep. We're going to get real and very honest <laughs> once again, man. Um, it's, 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 it's one of those conversations which I think, you know, it needs to be had. And we, we, we don't have it often enough. That is, you know, we don't have these kind of conversations often enough. And I think that's the one thing that we do pride ourselves in very much when it does come to, you know, the open book and what we do right here. That we, we try to have real honest conversations, you know, without the gimmicks, without the hoo-hahs and everything else and all of that. Just real stories, and you know, from real people, by real people. That's just what it is. And and, and today's story, you know, it is, it is one that... I personally have been threatening to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been threatening to have this kind of a conversation, this kind of a show for the longest time. Uh, but reason why, the biggest reason why I have not had it uh, for the longest time is because um, it's a tearjerker. Trust me. It's a tearjerker. <laughs> you know, so, so, so it's one of those th- kind of things, man. But what are we talking about? I mean, if you look at it, our guest today is, you know, one lady who... <coughs> I think we've all been through our, our fair share of challenges and trials and everything else in life, you know. But the kind of challenges that she's gone through and that she's had to face, when you when you hear them and when you listen to her, you wonder, how did you make it to the other side? How? How? How did you make it through to the other side? You know, I have so much respect and love for her. You know, she um, has such a huge heart. I just need, I need to tell you this, you know, I'm saying it to her right now. You know, she's got such a huge heart. She puts everybody else before self. And hence, we are here today because she's on a mission to once again put everybody else before her. You know, and, and, and this is how we've gotten here today. 2013, July, became a turning point in her life. You know, uh, a very close friend of hers, a sister to her, you know, was diagnosed with cancer. And when, I, when, when, when we say a turnaround in her life, literally, that's what happened. Because now she had to move from, oh, hearing about it like the, hear the rest of us do. You know, oh, we hear about people who are diagnosed with cancer. We hear about people beating cancer. We hear about, you know, people who lost their battle through cancer and or, or they battle with cancer. We, we always hear about these kind of things, but it's never whole. For her, she founded in her house. Like it came into her house. It came into her kitchen. You know, that's just how it happened. And she had to deal with it. And from that day onwards, the mission was not to focus on self, but to focus on everybody else around that. Kia is her name. Kia Mokhit is her name. Friend, how are you? Me? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. After such an intro, I don't know how I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm good. I'm okay. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a minute. <clears throat> Let's not even talk about how long it's been. It's been a minute, but as yeah. I say, I don't want to lie to you, Joel. Nah, I, I, I've been avoiding this, and 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 I think <laughs> we can't afford for me to break down. And you said you were gonna get tissues in here. Where are they? No, I'm at least somewhere here. Uh, you need to get them. <laughs> you need to prepare them. <laughs> this is never a good time. Oh man, it is never. It is never, man. Yeah. But let's start off here. Kiamuhezu. Mm-hmm. Young girl from Gukakis. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Actress. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 don't start. <laughs> <laughs> Actress, yeah. you know, you you you're doing all of that. Your life life is cool. life is sweet for you, dude. Life is great. You know, you got family, you got friends around you and everything else. And then that afternoon you're washing dishes. July. Yeah. The ninth. <sighs> yeah. Aish, yeah. No, July the ninth, no? Yeah. Um, it was a very ordinary day. Like you sure. said, you know, I come back. I was still in, uh, um, I think I was doing, I was studying media then actually. Still acting. Was also doing um, community radio stations. Yeah. So my life was hectically busy. I had a show on the west side of M called um, Soul Therapy. Was doing very greatly well. So I had my mind, you know, like wrapped up in all the right things in life. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then here comes Ubi Dumelo, my dear friend. May her soul rest in peace. No, 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 yet come Ubi Dumelo. Her and I were washing dishes like we always did. We'd always be drinking hot chocolate. Here's one thing that I always forget to mention. <laughs> Whenever we're together, we'd be drinking hot chocolate together. Oh, yeah? So, <coughs> sorry. So here we are drinking hot chocolate that way and then washing dishes at the same time. She's like, oh, by the way, I've got something to tell you. I'm like, what's up? She's like, oh, by the way, but you can't cry. I'm like, okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, I've got cancer. Ha, <laughs> don't play, man. Don't play like that. No, I'm serious. I've got I'll be a lot of tissues that come my cancer. I'm like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. Wait, let's recap. What? No, <laughs> I've been diagnosed with LV or lots of tissues that call my cancer. I went to go get my results today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. Digesting that was hard. I won't even lie. Um but first, I had to try to cram the name because that, that's what I had a problem with. I could not explain alveolar soft tissue sarcoma can, nor could I even pronounce it. Yeah. So, Budimela grew up with this huge lump on her leg. And this lump, let me hold it. So, it was like this big. Imagine walking around with the thing this big on your foot. And the doctors could never really understand what it was. They did so many tests and throughout the years, they still could not figure out what the real problem was. Mm. That's when they did the biopsy. And the biopsy revealed that it was cancer. Almost three years later of her having that. And yeah, um, that's where the cancer was. But now I was like, so what are they saying? She's like, no, I've been given at least three to five years to live. <laughs> so... Yeah, that was still a bit of a joke. I'm like, this one is pranking me, probably. But you can see that there's no more playing there. I think a day passed, then she was hospitalized. The cancer was apparently becoming aggressive due to it being cut because with the al apparently with the sarcomas, once you touch it, some okay. of them are very aggressive. It runs, and it started running with her. And she was then... <sighs> that is when she was... Um, she started getting a bit worse. She was worsening by the day. Bidimola was literally deteriorating by the day. So with that being said, after she came back from the hospital, now she's been given less than six months to live. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, the doctors say that there's nothing that they can do. Okay, this is not like in July, and I'm counting less than six months. Does it mean that the, at the end, if, at the end of this year you're gonna be gone? I'm not gonna have my sister with me. Yeah, yeah. So now her and I start planning. I'm like, you know what? Instead of doing this whole hoo ha thing, we're gonna start something. Let's start finding out about cancer awareness programs and being a part of them to try to make a difference. Because that's what she always wanted to do. Yeah. Bitimula was this lazy person. Bitimula hated work. Ask anybody who knew her; she hated work. So. Unless if it was something that made her look good. That was something about my <laughs> friend. She loved something, anything that made her look good. Yeah. So this was that thing, you know, painful as it was. It kept her going because she knew she would look good. Sick, but good. So I think the game changer was the day that she went to go cut her hair. When she called me up and went like, please come with me to the salon. I'm like, sure, what's happening? It's like, no, I just want to go do my, she had very beautiful, like colored hair type of. Um, no, I took, I walked with her, went there, and then when we arrived, no, on our way there, she's like, you're not allowed to cry. I'm like, this is the second time that you're saying that to me now. First time was the time that you told me that you were sick. And now you're repeating the same words. What the hell is going on exactly? <coughs> she takes off her hat. Her other side was like, you know, like when a rat chews up a place, something like, it was chewed up. Like, yeah. the hair was gone. And when she did this, another chunk was like, just... So her hair was basically just falling um, off. Yeah, it was falling off. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, it's the chemo. We went in. Throughout her cutting her hair, I'm crying. Tears are dripping. Mm. I remember the barber was like, what's happening here? They're like, no. Um, we explained the situation. So now they're busy trying to make jokes to try to, you know, like calm us down a bit just to try to keep us away from that. But I remember calling my mom. I'm like, it's actually really happening. Yeah. What I've seen on TV and always took, like just looked at and turned the other way about is happening right before my eyes to someone that I love. 
Dumila's hair is falling off so much that she's cutting it. Mm. And here's the messed up part about that day when she go went to go cut her hair. That's the same day that her mom was going in for an operation, for an eye operation. That day, I remember my mom and I, after the hair, my mom came home and then we took her and we went shopping. After we came back shopping, we went straight to the hospital to go see her mom. Her dad was already there. Yeah. Um, we all made jokes about how she looked. Her mom was like, oh my God, you look so different. You know, it was just that thing. It was very funny, but still painful at the same time. We left her there with her family. So my life changed because whenever I'd go to school, on my way back, I'd be calling her, what do you need? I was in town, central Johannesburg, so it was very easy. What do you need? I'd buy whatever it is that she needed because her cravings changed on a daily. Sure. On a daily. Bidumula would eat this thing and want something else the next second. So, and she loved her watermelon. She loved her watermelon. Um, so, watermelon, popo, whatever fruits that you could get your hands on, you just always had to make sure that she always had that. Mm. And that's what I always, that was my primary concern, making sure that she was always okay. So fine, we, we, we got that done. Um, and then further on, yo, then it started, she, she started kicking out all the food, everything that she would eat. Yeah. She had to take like a tab. So <laughs> one of those tablets, Nelia Lechadza, for she doesn't spit out everything every time. Oh yeah, she, yeah. for nausea and whatever. For nausea, yeah. <coughs> so um, I remember this other evening, she tried to eat. She was craving pie. My mom also helped. She made sure that there was always pie in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go grab it. She didn't even get to a little, not even a quarter of it. It all came out. Running around in the street. <laughs> I think it was around nine in the evening. Running around because she lived like three houses away from my house. <laughs> and we got it. But still. That came out too. The pills weren't helping. Yeah, no, it's getting <laughs> real. Like nothing. She can't eat now. Mm -hmm. She was shaking. She had this thing where her hands were twitching. She couldn't hold anything. Like. Mind you, wait, hold on. Let me just come in. <laughs> this is all still 2013. Yeah. Because July, it's not, we're giving you three to five years. All of a sudden, it's Literally six months. months yeah. And here you are. You need to see somebody that you've detailed as someone who's always been strong. You know, she's always been a strong, independent person. Um, at 23 years old, this is what she's got to deal with. At 23 years old now, mundane tasks. And I say mundane tasks in that, you know, things that we, we take for granted. I mean, me being able to pick up this cup been able to hold this pen and write and whatever it may be um been able to feed myself and whatever it is to now having to take pills so that you can hold your food down <sighs> i swear pubs i've never seen anything like that in my life and i genuinely don't wish that pain upon anyone even though i know that there are millions of people who are yeah. going through that at this present moment Nothing hurts more than seeing somebody that you've always known to be so strong deteriorate every single day. Bidimula was a Scorpio. Her and I were both Scorpios. Her birthday was on the 4th of November, mine on the 12th. I knew one thing about our characters that we had so greatly in common, and that is just how strong we were. Very strong, very strong-minded, very influential. We could sit in a group of people and we'd walk around there having chewed all of their minds. <laughs> That was just a beauty <laughs> that we had. <laughs> and we, pr like, we, <laughs> it was just that simple. And yeah. she was gorgeous at the same time. You know, like, when you have the beauty and the persona to back it up, it's easy for people to, to, to fall into you, to fall in love with you. So she had that character. Yeah. And now I'm watching her go from that to a, the weakest version of herself. One thing that I am thankful for, though, is that. At some point, I told me to Melo, start writing down daily journals. That is how I still have it. I have a letter today from Bitu Melo because she started writing down journals every single day. She was uh, writing down everything that she felt, everything that was going through her body, 
all of her thoughts about the cancer and we started documenting that so much that we even had a camera where we did an interview with her and her family with um took pictures of her in the streets her yeah. last attempt to walk in the streets okay she wasn't work sorry she wasn't walking um we're pushing her with a wheelchair because she couldn't walk anymore at some point and so even then we couldn't keep her out of the house for too long because she was what do you call this mobilizer thing the breathing machine oh yeah the yeah yeah yeah, <sighs> yeah i forgot the name <laughs> she had to be attached to that because she suffered from shortage of, dri- of breath. breath she even mentioned that in her letter so with that being said Boyd Miller's journey became my journey. It was as if though God was taking me through that. I remember when we were looking for a title to call her book mm. that she had written, even though it was just like snippets. I even have her last letter that she wrote, the last with her handwriting. Yeah. I still kept that. I was showing it to my husband the other day. I'm like, hey, yo, this was the last thing that Boyd Miller wrote. She wrote so much that I remember what broke my heart into two was the statement, just to quote a bit from her letter. She's like, something to look forward to my birthday on the 4th of November or not. I've been given less than six months to live, so this could be my last birthday to celebrate. She never made it to her birthday. Bidumula died before, she died four days before her birthday, before she turned 24. So... Mm. Mm. Tell you what, yeah. the open book it is, and uh, today we do have. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're always just hearing that. No, this person is very strong. This person, yeah, strength personified. Her name is Gamakhetsi. <laughs> she is here and uh, she's actually detailing the events and the story that she went through. When she found out that a friend of hers, a dear friend of hers, a sister of hers, um, was diagnosed with um, cancer. What kind? Tissue cancer. What kind? <laughs> Alveola. Mm-hmm. Soft tissue. What's the last? Psychoma cancer. There we go. Alveola. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on a soft tissue psychoma cancer. I got it right? Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> See the problem I had? I tell you, man. By the way, over 250 kinds of cancers to date have been found. 250. Over 250 different kinds of cancers. And I think you and I, we, we share the very same irritation when it does come to cancer and cancer awareness campaigns mm. is that... We only focus on breast cancer. Yes, it's November, Movember and everything else. And it's, you know, it's the prostate cancer, men's health month and all those kind of things. But where it just ends, mm. you know? Yeah. What about the other cancers? That is the question that um, I posed to myself and I posed to Victor Miller also. And shortly before she died, you know, one thing that I loved the most about her, if you think I'm strong, you should have seen her. At some point, she could even slap me and go like, snap out of it, I'm okay. Sure. We des- when we decided that we want to get involved in cancer awareness programs, um, we wanted to tell the stories that are untold. So we decided to do a documentary. I remember I worked together with a great group of young people, the likes of Mpodweba, um, Gatleho, I forgot his surname. But we and a couple of others, Bule Rangole, we got together and we wanted to do this. We wanted to tell the story. Um, every single day, I'd take Boitu Melo's letters mm. and I'd try to I'd put them together. I'd write down something and I'd put everything that she wrote together. And I remember when her and I together came up with the concept, never got to tell my story. But I remember Boitu Melo died on a Thursday. That Sunday when we had the last production meeting, I remember the team saying to me, the name never got to tell my story will only stick have it be that Bidumela doesn't live to tell her story because <laughs> Bidumela had another option of a name it was called apple of, my eye. apple of my eye and I was against apple of my eye because I felt like it's worshipping the, the the cancer or making it look good because apple of your eye is something that you love something that you hold dear and I just didn't feel like cancer deserved that so 
with that being said, we, um, her and I had this, okay, me and the team actually, we sat down and we, we agreed, okay, fine. Should we do or not make it, only then will we keep this name. Yeah. <laughs> Little did I know, Thursday was D-Day. But Dumelo on Wednesday, was it Wednesday? Yeah, that Wednesday. No, 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 the Tuesday. The Tuesday I had a show at Westside and I had to rush down to her to go and see her um, just before I went to work. That was when I saw that she's going. Perhaps I remember she's sitting, she's lying on the bed. I came into her room, there was a chair there. So I came and I sat in the room. So she sat up, I, I can, it's like I'm seeing a video of it in my head. She sat up and she's sitting on the bed and she's like, come here, she motioned me to come sit next to her. I went and sat next to her and then she says to me, hold me, hug me. Then I held her with one hand, she's like, mm-mm. Hold me with two hands. So I just took my other arm and then I hugged mm. her. And then she starts laughing, starts laughing. And when she started laughing, I'm laughing with her because I don't even know why we're laughing. And from there, she started speaking like a two-year-old child. Her mind completely went AWOL. <clears throat> she stopped making sense at all. I remember her mom came and kneeled before her and tried to find out what she was trying to say because even she could, she was getting a bit frustrated at some point that we couldn't understand her. So we're asking her, what are you trying to say? We couldn't understand a thing. Imagine perhaps you've got a two-year-old child who's trying to say something so bad and you're not hearing a thing. But now what more? A grown woman whom you could <coughs> not even understand. I could not even make out what Victor Miller was saying. To this day, I can't tell you. I just said to her, I have to go. I have to get to work quickly. But I'll come back and see you first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, it was just after seven. I'm thinking to myself, I need to hurry because... She has to, I remember I was praying, waking up, and I, I was about to pray. I'm like, after praying, I know that it's, it's 8 o'clock, she has to take her medication, so I want to go find out quickly what does she want to eat. Um, while I'm busy sitting there, I tried praying. For some reason, I couldn't. I was just crying. Then I went to just go sit in the dining room just to recuperate a bit. While I'm sitting there, a knock comes. Somebody's knocking. They're like, did you see the ambulance at Peter Miller's house? God knows I hadn't even brushed my teeth. <laughs> In my PJs, I left the doors open. I don't even know where that person... I ran out of the house so quickly. When I got there, she was lying on the floor at her house. She was lying on the floor. And while she was lying there... Damn it. She wasn't moving. She wasn't saying anything. She was just lying there. And find the paramedics came. They took her. Then while we're sitting, we were, we were communicating with the father and the father was updating her, us on everything that was happening. So eventually, the following day, we all decided, let's all go to, to the hospital together. So I was at school. I was like, I'll, I'll come join you guys. Um, I went there just before it was after three because at four o'clock we had to go back. We had to go. It, visiting hours were ending. Got there just after three and... Yeah, when I got there, she died at exactly 10 to 4. We sat with her a bit, exactly at 10 to 4. Boy, Dumela passed away right before our eyes. So, hmm, four days before her birthday, trying to just take it all in. The doctors called us back. Okay, they took us out, of course, to try to resuscitate, and when they couldn't, they called us in to give us the news and then we had to go and say goodbye. Watching her lifeless body, number one. <clears throat> she wasn't moving, wasn't responding. I swear that is the worst way to ever see anyone that you love. Yeah. <clears throat> alveolar soft tissue sarcoma or ASPS as it is known a malignant, a malignant, malignant soft tissue tumor yeah which uh, 
it spreads, you know, to other parts of your body. It starts off, you know, in the soft connective tissues of the body, you know, like the fat muscles and the nerves and all those kind of, and then it will spread to other parts of the body. Here's a 23-year-old. I don't know about you, but I mean, I think me in, the, in, in my 20s, I was having fun. <laughs> me in my 20s, the last thing I was thinking about was having to go to hospital to go see anybody. In our, in our 20s, it is chasing life. It is chasing all these kind of things and all those kind of things. The last thing that you got to think about is, oh, hey, it might end at any time, you know? In our, in our 20s, with you, you're not thinking of losing a friend. And, I, and I sure, I'm sure, I'm very certain that a parent who has a 20-year-old, a 22-year-old, a 23-year-old, is not thinking or even planning of having to bury their child, let alone <laughs> you, on the other hand, Gia, here you are, you have to deal with a very close friend of yours, somebody who is, as I say, who's a sister of yours, having to go through all of this. And by the way, your grandmother as well had succumbed to a battle with cancer? Yeah. But as you as you had said, or, or as you've said before, that Brito Melo's ordeal kind of hit you harder. It hit you harder because you had to be there from the get-go, right throughout. Till the last day, you had to be there. And my question comes down to this, is that support. You had to be strong for Ritu Melo. And you often say that she, 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 at that point, when you had to be strong for her, she was strong for, for you. Yeah? She was the strongest person I knew, Pabs. Yeah. She was... Ask anybody, man, about Bitty Melo who knew her. Bitty Melo had a beautiful, strong personality. She was so strong. Sure. And now that is why this became so hard because how do you. I know her as that, and now she's this. In a matter of seconds, it felt like that thing that just happened, and mm. then you go, like, okay, what just happened? Whoa. Like you just ask for, you could just ask for a replay and go like, can we take another, like, you know, like when you're in a scene and you're there like, okay, cut, let's take it again. Like you wish that, okay, can, can we just redo it so I can maybe do certain things right? Like maybe we could have done this differently and then that wouldn't have happened. So many things just go through your head. Mm. But the main thing was, I remember after we Dumala died, we still had to continue on being there for the family. Dumela's funeral. I remember when the family asked us to <laughs> write down her the program and gonna get the butchery. Eulogy, yeah. yeah. When I had to write that, now that is where it all hit me that okay, damn, she is really gone. I remember with her programs, we did something so different. She loved lavender color. Her program was purple. With all of her pictures, some of we took some of her pictures with her loved ones. And like just made a beautiful collage of it and her story with her mother and father and brother at the back, a picture of them. And then the picture was just there at the top. And then um, we made sure that hers was a beautiful big picture, which I'd brought a copy along, a beautiful big, uh, big picture of her in the front. It was it was not your ordinary. Yeah. But the main thing was we wanted to do the best that we could to give her a proper send off. Though we couldn't do much, but the little that we could to make sure that we do not had the best send off. Look at it in this way. That was the most traumatic experience that I've ever gone through, but it gave me the strength to do so much. After we Miller died on the latter side of life, um, after she died, I decided to continue on the legacy. Okay, this was after the trauma of six months because I refused counseling. <laughs> Bulelo and I did. She'll vouch. Yeah, we refused counseling. But yeah, I was down for a good six months. I could not do anything. And I didn't realize that it went back to that. I couldn't work, couldn't do anything. as literally a potato. And realizing that it's because I hadn't gotten through what went down. But yeah, eventually when life happened and I had to suck it all up and just be strong again, 
I decided to continue on with the documentary that she wanted to do. And that is when I came across a group of cancer patients in Kahiso. Mm. And working together with them, we start a cancer foundation, which you know about. Sorry, and we named it Bafense Cancer Foundation. We could have named it Bidumelo Cancer Foundation, but I want that now not to make it about one individual, though she is the heart of it. But I wanted to make it about all of them. Because the one message that we preach in this entire battle with cancer is that cancer can be beaten. Sure. I have one member already who has beaten cancer. She's made it through it. She's an older woman. She lives in Kahiso and she, be she beat cancer. She beat a brain tumor like <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. When, when they say that if it is not your time, it's not your time. Mm -hmm. Cancer had kicked her, knocked her out. And she is still standing to this day. And she's the lady who's assisting me in the foundation. She lives, yeah, like I said, mm -hmm. so in this foundation, it's elderly people, majority of them dealing with different types of cancers. Now, going back to the statement that you made that the problem with what's happening in, in media today is that they are so focused on one type of cancer, two types of cancers. They are over 250, guys. How do we just... I don't, I don't want to use the word capitalize, but how do we just focus on two types when there is over 250, over, over 250? We haven't even gotten the real amount of how many cancers there actually are. That is still something that we're yet to find out. But every single day, every month, October again, breast cancer, ne? breast cancer? Yes, October's breast cancer month. Where's psychoma? Where's blood cancer, leukemias in them? Who's talking about them? Who's talking about your brain tumors? We, we don't even know. Truth be told, the reason why I stood up so much when after I was okay, or rather trying to be okay, was when I realized that had this psychoma not hit my world, I would not have known about it. True. I would not have even cared. True. I realized my ignorance, and I realized just how much we don't care what's happening out there in the world until it hits us at home. And that is something that I told myself that I'm never going to be doing again. Because it took that happening to someone that I love for me to get a wake up call and to actually educate myself and empower myself. That is, the mo that is why the motto of Bafense is to empower, to educate and to come together as a community. Because you can't run away from it, it's there. And the fact that it's not happening to you does not mean that you don't have to care. Perhaps had I not brought this matter to you, had I not come and sp spoken to you, would you even know what this is? No. Would you have even cared? Sure, we hear about it. We have a little <laughs> tear about it if we hear somebody's soppy story. Let me tell you something about you. I think, and here's the thing, <clears throat> why we, we, we're having this conversation is... We don't have conversations about this. I think it is easier for me to have a conversation with you about the festivities, you know? Have a conversation with you about what you've achieved. It is easier for me to have a conversation with you about the frivolities in life. But real matters such as this, and, and here's the, the, the other thing about a cancer as well is there are those of us who think that, no, cancer is for a certain race. There are those of us who think that, no, cancer is for the rich. We never really do think, Jorge, my next door neighbor can be diagnosed with a cancer. And I ask this question as well with our health facilities, especially those around your townships and everything else, your so-called previously disadvantaged areas. The health facilities there, are they well equipped to be dealing with cancers? Truth be told, I learned one thing about it. There is a huge problem in our health um, system, especially where small communities are concerned. But Dumela comes from Kahiso, but she had to go and be assisted in Jobek Jane. Park Town. Park Town. Jobek Jane, Kahiso, distance. By the way, if you're using public transport from Kokahiso to Jobekjet, it's a nightmare. And believe me, I'm dealing with cancer patients on a daily. 
Yeah. And they are still dealing with the very same situation. There's a uh, another woman who just recently passed away. She had Yamal. I just forgot the name, what it's called. And with her, it was even more difficult because she used to use, they had these packets that, uh, no, let's not talk about that one, actually. But no, basically, resources. Talk, talk about <laughs> uh, perhaps, I, no. <laughs> resources think, are a problem. <clears throat> resources are a problem. For her to get, when she would run out of those bags, it was a problem for her to get more. She ended up getting an inf- <laughs> For the life of God in me. She... Yeah, they'd always give her stories whenever she needed more. That, no, it's not your date yet. Okay. It's not your I date think, yet. Let's, 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 we we, we got to give a, a bit of detail around this. Um... I must say the first the first time I heard it, yeah. I I got very irate. And the more I processed this whole thing, the emotions kind of swell yeah. up. But basically, um, this lady she had a she had a stomach cancer, and there's these bags that she had to get mm-hmm. for all the waste to go out, which would need to be changed period per- periodically. Um, and so, and, and there's a certain amount that should be given by uh, the health facilities, you know, at the hospitals where, where she would go. She's a public facility, just so by the way. So they'd give her a certain amount, and then after um, they're done, there's a certain period, two, three weeks, or a month, or whatever it is, come back, let's check, and then we give you yours, you know, and you go on your merry way. But this time around, obviously, she had run out. Goes back to the hospital, and it's, no, but it's not your time to come and get. Not that the hospital has been blown to smithereens or that we don't have or what it is not your prescribed date yeah to come and get more and the scary thing that happened was they <clears throat> okay this is quite sensitive <sighs> they decided to use plastic yako shop right to try to assist her and because giddy intestine it caught on that and it caused an infection for her. And then they used cotton to try to clean it up. The fibers stayed. And the fibers, yeah, they basically rot. And after that, what happened was worms, live worms came out. And yeah, from the <laughs> this was a battle that we went through, and by the grace of God, when she died, a part of me said, "Finally, she's resting." Because of what she had been through. Because of what she had been through. I swear, pups, like you must see cancer patients when it's cold. I remember with the first cancer winners, when companies were calling to ask the cancer walk, when they were yeah. calling to ask, what can we donate with? I requested them to bring out, to bring blankets. I worry about them when it gets cold. Yeah. Because that is when it gets more sensitive for them. For them to even walk is a problem. For the critical ones especially. Whew. So. It is that. Now, I ask this question, uh, Kia. That you, you lost your grandmother due to cancer. We do Melo is diagnosed with um, ASPS, yeah. alveolar soft tissue, uh, psychom cancer. So she's 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 diagnosed with that. That journey, you're with her. You see her fight and lose that battle. You are there with her. And because of what the conversation, because of the conversation that you had with her. In that kitchen, on the 9th of July, 2013, 
Bafenza is birthed and you you decide to honor her by continuing that and going out and assisting other cancer patients. Look in in, 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 in in the whole support and everything else. Because because as as it mentioned, you know, this was her selflessness, you know, we do met a selfless side in saying that yes, I've been diagnosed with cancer, but this is not gonna be about me. I'm not gonna crawl up in a little corner somewhere and say, Oh poor me. We're gonna go out, we're gonna start something, we're gonna help people. Yeah. Right? And you decide to take that on and everything else. I want to ask you this question, Pekia. Where on God's beautiful earth are you getting support from? Who is supporting you when you're doing that with everybody else? I'll be honest. My number one supporter is my mother. Yo, that woman. <laughs> wow. Um, my mother from Bidumelo's journey was there. She was... Damn. God bless that, that woman's soul. She was there throughout. Um, I remember after Botumela died, I called her immediately. She parked her car. She was driving from work. She parked her car on the side of the road. And I could hear her scream in the car crying. She drove straight to the hospital after that to come and fetch us. And throughout every single thing that I'm doing, She's there saying, okay, you go handle this. I'll handle this part. She has been such a great support system. And then from there, in the midst of it all, I have a great new support system, which is my husband. Bless that man. Him also. <laughs> he like just, it's funny. It's like he just jumped into the pact and it started all making sense, you know. He's like, him and my mother just become this tag team of a support system for yeah. me. And with them too, it's been so easy to run this journey. And oh, believe me, I've got a great support system from my friends also. I've got two best friends that I grew up, from, grew, uh, grew up with and they also have just been amazing. Sharon and Solu have been amazing. And then you'll, you'll, it's funny, even my friends from the media industry, you're like, so Mbalent Lezakwe, um, Mlungi Simate, um, um, yeah, Nzamo, Abashi, all of them, this group of people, Mbule Lokatise, I, I swear I had the best. On my first cancer walk, these were the, uh, the faces that showed up. They left their, for a gig that wasn't even paying them, they left their comforts, the comforts of their own homes and they came and they supported the vision that I had. And we made history. The first ever cancer walk in Kajiso. And we did the most. We reached out to the people. People came in their numbers. We gave out gifts to the cancer patients. It was beautiful. <sighs> My problem with those activities is it almost just seems like it's that day and never again. Yay! You know, um, I, I always look at funerals, for instance, you know, when there's, when there's a bereavement at a, at, a, at a home or at a family, whatever it is. For those seven, eight, maybe even ten days from the time that, you know, the announcement is made to the funeral day, everybody is around you. I always just say the following day, that's when reality kicks in because now you're left alone, you know. And and the support that I'm talking about is when all of this is gone, when the cameras are off, when the mics are off, when 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 Pops is not calling, you know, um, nagging you about meeting up or you nagging me about meeting up, <laughs> you know, when, when that is not happening yeah. and you need to sit and say, I lost my grandmother to this. Budumelo is gone. I've seen other patients that I'm trying to help lose their battles with it. Truth be told, there is no comfort to that. I can sit here and talk about this as much as I want. There is absolutely no comfort to it. It, it hits me. Hmm. Oh, it hits me. <laughs> Damn it, it hits me. That... 
I, number one, always revert back to who I am. I'm a child of the living God, number one. And with that being said, I know exactly where to draw strength from. I'm not doing this because I want to look better than anybody else. I'm not doing this because I enjoy sitting here and shedding tears and just sharing sad stories. I'm doing this to change other people's lives. Not because I know better, not because I have better. But I don't believe that everything that happened in my life happened by chance. They happened for a purpose. And that purpose must be fulfilled. And I can't sit down knowing what I know and letting more people die. If I can change two or three people's lives with the little knowledge that I have, then I would have done the world's greatest. Because I remember growing up, Sharon, my best friend and I used to have the saying that sometimes God will let things happen to you so that you are able to assist people who have gone through, who will go through it in the nearby future. Because you will come across someone and they will need to hear that. They will need to hear somebody else saying, hey, I've been through that. I know exactly how you're feeling. Because we even used to have this funny example going like, if you're speaking to somebody who's got AIDS and you're saying that you're, it's going to be okay, you Mm-mm. don't have it. What do you know? Mm-mm. What do mm. you know? You know nothing <laughs> about that. Sure, you don't need to have gone. You don't need to have um, to have it to 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 put yourself in their shoes. That is where empathy comes in. That is where I learned the art of empathy. I didn't need to be infected by cancer for me to know what these people are going through. All that I had to do was to be affected by it, sure. and me being affected by it. Believe me, empathy took a different turn in my life. It took a different role where I was. I went beyond putting myself in their shoes. I walked with them the journey so that I never, they never had to feel like I'm just playing a character of a support system. I needed them to know that their every feeling, that is why I can understand when the weather is like this, yeah. it is a painful thing that is happening to them. They're not okay. Bet my life on it. They're not okay. But this is, again, it goes back to that thing, Yohuti. You just have to, man, Step out of your own self and find out what the next person is going through. I learned through my acting life that every single character that you play, it has a history, it has a story, it has a journey, it has a beginning. And if you don't go to the core line of each and every character, like a character of a person with cancer, how do you play it? If you've never even taken the moment to even find out what they're going through. <laughs> I still do have this question. I think from the first time that I met you, I've been asking this question and I still do ask it now. By the way, let me confess this. I'm afraid of hospitals. I have a phobia for hospitals. <laughs> I never go to hospitals. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to lie to you. My friends and family know that uh, when you land up in hospital, Shem, I'll phone you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have a phobia for hospitals, you know. So I think since the last time that I met you, I, I, I have not been to public, especially public health care facilities to check with those in the West End. I have not been there to check if, you know, there is any improvement when it does come to, you know, treatments of cancers and i had mentioned earlier on that i mean cancers for us we've seen it as a you know a rich man's you know a rich person's kind of disease because of the treatment that you got to go through yeah your chemos the diets the medication radiation dude you know and and speaking to people who have been infected by cancer and that have won the battle they'll tell you that Chemo especially, it's a battle. It is. It is that 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 day or or two days after that, you you you, you feel like your body's been ripped apart, type of situation. And I now need to think about this that when somebody has got to use public transportation to move from Kokahiso to Parktown and back after having gone through chemo. You know, so the question comes down to this is that public health care facilities in this country, what are we doing to ensure that 
I don't need to, you know, go through all of that. If there's a clinic 200 meters away from where I stay, why do I need to get into four or five taxis to go and get treatment about cancer? You know, we, we, there's ever so many campaigns about cancer. There's so many cancer walks in this country. Um, I was making a joke just last month and I'm like, what? So many. There's so many cancer walks in this country. Question comes down to after the walk and then what? You're going to come to me, give me gifts. You're going to come to me and give me a hug. But the fact that close to me, there isn't a facility, a healthcare facility that can assist me with this. The fact that you, you, and I hope that with that lady, she was the last, but the fact that you go to a public healthcare facility and you're turned away because it's not your day for you to receive your treatment or it's not your day for you to get your medication or whatever it may be. Um, that, that, that for me is, is, is what irks me and that's what kind of made me set up because I thought, what if? What if I find cancer <laughs> waiting for me in my kitchen one of these days? You know what I mean? What if I find it sitting in my living room? Perhaps I'll tell you this. We're too ignorant. Yeah. We are too, way too ignorant. Um, this is happening to people within our community. Sure. And number one thing that I have such a big problem with is that we've created all these myths. Like you're saying, it's a racial thing. It's become a racial thing. Cancer was never a white people's disease. It has never. But we've taken it. I've heard so many crazy stories about cancer. You? Yeah, no, it's been interesting. It's been way too interesting. To hear that some people called it witchcraft. I remember during our journey and uh, when we were just speaking to other cancer patients, there's one lady who once told us of a story about a man who was actually rejected in his community because it was said that he has cancer. Because it was witchcraft, meaning that uloiwe. How? How about we get educated? How about we actually empower ourselves with just information? It sometimes it doesn't even cost us anything. Your local clinics, as much as they may not have all the resources, but there is some resources. These pamphlets that they have, taking one of them just to read, just to find out what this thing is, so that should it, not saying that it will, should it ever happen to you or someone close to you, you know exactly what to do. We are too afraid to find out the truth, and so we create little myths around it so that it doesn't hurt as bad as it should. Another thing that I realized that we do so wrongly. I haven't given up the battle and I'm not about to. The pain, it's painful to see everybody that I love because I've grown, they've grown to be my parents. They call me their strength and I call them mine. I call them my strength because I look at them and I don't know how they can survive each and every day, wake up in the morning and still be the people that they are, have huge smiles on their faces. I remember I got the first cancer work. My mom, after she left, she's like, those people don't even look sick because they don't. Perhaps you'll find them smiling. And that is one thing that my mother doesn't forget about them. She always mentions, she's like, the way that they smile. As people who are constantly crying about the problems that we have in life, once you revert back to what they are going through and the smiles on their faces, you will realize just how ungrateful you are. Mind you, these are people who can't work, meaning they can't support their families. They have to depend on what is given to them. And now, way, now who's got X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but it's still not enough for you. Step out a bit and go and ask them how they survive on a daily where they go through all these different types of cravings and they can't even afford to get half of them. How? Why? Why? You, you very smartly used affected and not infected. That you've been affected by cancer. Yeah. 
you know, and this was one of the other things as well that you had mentioned that you wanted to be the support and give support to those who are affected. Because worst case scenario, those who are infected get to leave us. And it's the affected that are left behind. That's true. You had your reasons for refusing counseling. Mm -hmm. But I guess right now, retrospectively, you're like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have. I was too scared. <laughs> yeah. But beyond that, you know, till today, what are we doing for those who are affected by cancer? Because listening to your story, listening to your journey, and I, <laughs> I've only just, you know, like gotten so much of your journey, and I was, I was, I was in, in prep of this. I was thinking about it the other day that what if roles were reversed and I was in your position and I honestly don't think that I wouldn't, firstly, I would not have made it here today. I'd be, some, but that one is crazy. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I mean? But I, I also don't think that I would have continued with this, you know? But I guess you are, you <laughs> As you said, you know, you're, you're a child of God. And when you're a child of God, you're a chosen one. Yeah. Therefore, you've been prepped and you've been equipped to deal with all of this. On that, I loved what you just said. You've been equipped. Boy Dumela's life was not an accident. It was short-lived. And she did not come into my life in particular by mistake. I had a lot of questions with God. I asked him why. A friend of mine answered me and said, what if if she was alive, you wouldn't have gotten as far as you have with this awareness? Why? Because as fired up as we were, we liked playing a lot. Wait, I need a bit of a break. Sorry. <sighs> Her life, as we said, has been greatly affected by cancer. Uh, you know, 2013, she finds out that a friend of hers, 23 years old, has been diagnosed with cancer, and she now has to deal with this. You know, um, once again, we, we need to ask ourselves this question. We need to ask ourselves this very pertinent question. How much do you know about cancer? <laughs> you don't need to be the, you don't, you don't need, you don't need to be you know, a, 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 a medical practitioner or anything like that. But just do your research. Find out something about cancer. You know, get to know something about it. As, as, as we all do know, you know, when, it, when you have a bit of a sneeze, uh, a runny nose here, ah, let me go do this, let me go do that and whatever it may be. But with cancer, should it come up knocking at your door or should you find it in your house? Uh, in the way that Gia did, what then? What would you do? You know, how well, how equipped are you when it does come to the cancers? That is the question that we are asking today, and that's the question that we um, we need to ask of ourselves as to how much do you know about cancer? We're gonna take a bit of a break. We'll be back just now. K Radio, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, as we said at the top of the show, you know. Today was, yeah, it was going to be a tear jerk. I did not think this much. I did not think this much. As we asked, uh, how much do you know about cancer? You know, you got to ask yourself that question, you know, as to how much do you know about a disease that is caused by an unconditional uh, division of abnormal cells in a part of the body. <laughs> Over 250 kinds of cancers? It's not even going into a test right here in terms of how many do you know. But, I mean, we always hear of breast cancer, lung cancer, uh, throat cancer, <laughs> pancreas cancer, uh, prostate cancer. And then, yeah. But even with that, even with that, 
once you are diagnosed with a cancer or you know once the doctor's results come back that hey by the way you have this kind of cancer and whatever it may be what then after that you understand and and that becomes a question and hence i always um ask this question and why i always say yeah we can have all these campaigns we can have all these walks and have all these events and all those kind of things and then what then 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 what happens after that you know do we have a uh, a program or facilities that can assist people with cancer you know do we have support structures and systems for those who are affected by cancer not infected yes we've got to deal with those and and assist those who are infected we've got to deal with the cancer what happens to those who are affected by it do we have these kind of things that is um or programs or and and people that are willing to assist them with that but very little you know there's there's very little there's a lot of cancer organizations out there and you know but i think in particular those of us who grow up in small communities those of us who grow up in um your townships and everything else i don't think there's enough that has been done in those areas Perhaps I'll tell you this. That is where Buffins uh, Cancer yeah. Foundation comes in. I call all of those campaigns one head wonders. Mm. One head wonder. They're here today and then poof, yeah. gone tomorrow. They make that difference one day and they're never seen again until the next campaign comes up. That's my biggest. That's where my anger regarding all of this comes from. I hate those campaigns because of that very reason. because they don't realize that cancer is not a m- disease that you have for that day that the campaign is done <laughs> you live with it every single sure. day every day you struggle with that thing you don't struggle with it the day of the campaign and then tomorrow it's gone again with the campaign so if they're going to help you t- sorry if they're going to help you today what about tomorrow what about next week what about next week what about next month What then? Who is actually thinking of structures that are not just going to take care of those patients today but will actually be able to maintain them? Mm. Believe me, I am reaching out to people because there's only so much that I can do. Yeah. I'm very limited to what I can do. And believe me if I could do more I would. But number one, the first difference that you can make is to support the person around you who has this disease. Be to them what they can't be for themselves. Be that helping hand. I remember m- my best friend needed help to even go to the toilet. She needed help sometimes to even hold up her spoon. <laughs> be to them what they can be for themselves. Be selfless. I wish people understood the art of being selfless. You don't pay a single cent to be selfless and to actually just lend a helping hand to someone. It's free. It's so free. It's so free and it takes nothing out of you. If anything, it will build up some form of humanity from you. I am one of I have a heart of people that are a heart for people that amazes me sometimes. Because with all of these cancer patients, I got to know their families. And when you get to know their families, now I'm going back to the affected people. When you hear their family stories and just how much their own lives have become so disrupted by this illness, not by the person being sick, the illness on its own. Because they, I mean, you're my brother. If you're going to get cancer, I'm not disrupted by you. I'm disrupted by what's happening to you. Sure. So the, let's <laughs> not even get it twisted. It's not you who's disrupting. It's the... It's the situation. That situation disrupts them. But let me tell you this. There is such psychological situation that happens. I feel that the situation is so disruptive in my world. You as the infected person feel that you are disrupting my world. You feel that it's you. When you listen to all of these stories and they tell you that the infected person says that I am burdening my family. Mm. The affected person says this thing is killing my brother. 
you are looking at the actual thing as the affected person you are trying to destroy this wall this new thing that has just come about and is causing the disruption and still be able to be strong for the person behind while yet they so, Bitimala almost killed me one day when she says to when she said to me it would be better if i died because i am causing all of you pain we want to deal with the cancer for her sake she wants to die because she feels like she's being too much of a burden there is a battle and there's no communication in it the only person butumelo's mother will always tell you this that the only person who knew what butumelo was going through was me with this that i'm trying to say is that there is so much psychological kookaboo that is happening in this whole cancer thing yeah because it messes with everybody's minds and everybody thinks that this is the problem that is the problem you are the problem i am the problem and everybody is missing the main thing all that they need is each other and everything else will be good when you take away the cancer both of you the infected and the affected just need to kill the cancer out of the room and be there for each other that's it that's all that's needed i'm not saying go and get a pasta go and get just be there for one another and leave the cancer out of the room a bit let the love that you guys have for each other lead it nullifies the pain of the affected and it takes off the burden of the infected because they don't feel that they need to die in order to make your pain less and you don't feel the pain of watching you still see them as that strong person because your love for them speaks volumes your love for them takes over and you start seeing them and not the cancer i wish people understood this you know <laughs> there's something that i that i that i read someone's back and it says that god only gives the toughest battles to his toughest soldiers hmm. <laughs> that's definitely what you are you know truth be told before i met you before a conversation with you i did not know of of your loss of tissue sarcoma cancer i didn't i did not care much about cancer cuz for me i thought no but it's far away from me my perspective has changed and i and i really just do hope that for for you that is watching this that is listening to this that your perspective on life will change not necessarily cancer but your perspective on life will change one we need to learn to be selfless as a people we need to learn to be servants and when i say a servant i'm not saying you know for you to be I'm not saying that you know you need to run around and clean up after everybody and whatever but have just be ready and be willing to serve your fellow man <sighs> and let's not always just think but what is it in what is what is what's in it for me what am I going to get out of it what am I going to gain from you know sitting with this person who is and not even I'm not even talking about family members because I mean family members we almost feel obligated to assist them with whatever it is that they are going through but your neighbor <laughs> somebody down the road from you somebody that you do come across and whatever it is we need to get to a point where we are giving of ourselves and where we are serving people without expecting anything back that's what we've got to get through and i think for me this has been the biggest lesson that i've drawn from this that for you and i still do ask the question why the heck do you wake up every day and you do this why are you so passionate about this whole move and everything else and i'm thinking that you have been purposed to do this this is your calling to do this this is your ministry this is how you get to minister to to me 
that has never been infected or affected with cancer. Um, this is how you get to minister to those who are infected by cancer. This is how you get to minister to those who are affected by cancer. At no point have I heard you say you want to have, you know, a big bash or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at no point have you, as a matter of fact, you always try to avoid this where there's a camera mic and everything else and you are having this conversation. You just want to get down and do the work and assist those who are infected and affected. And it takes a special kind of person to do that. I'll tell you this about the cameras. I saw some funny thing about a list of the things that happen in society today. There's a picture of a man giving money to, let's say, sorry to use this word, no, let me rather say the, le- the ones who are in need. And he has a camera taking a picture while he gives that money. I kept that in my mind. And my number one prayer is that, Lord, may I never be found assisting for the attention. I don't need anybody's congratulations. I don't need anybody's pat on the back. What I went through is real. My best friend dying from cancer was real. It was the most realest thing that I've ever seen in my life. Her dying right before my eyes was real. Watching her hair fall off was real. Watching her deteriorate every single day was real. None of it was an action and cut type of thing. All of it was real. When life happens to you, when it hits you in that type of manner, you wake up from any fairy tale that you ever had of how perfect life is and how good life is or how good life is supposed to be. And you get to realize that each and every single day is precious. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's never been about you. As you you just spoke about one powerful word, you said purpose. Purpose are always put it together with destiny. There's only one you in life. And until you find out why you were put on this earth, Until you reach a full potential, you get to realize why you are on this earth. Every day that you live is in vain. Don't do it for the cameras. Don't do it for the applause. Don't do it for the followers. It was never about them. One thing about the word of God that I love is that it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the rest shall be added unto you. That's even in real life. When you go for the goal, everything else comes. When you go for your peppos, everything else comes naturally. Naturally. It's not forced. You don't have to go and go up handsy and try to do a backstroke to try and get what you want. If it is yours, it is yours and nobody can take it, take it away from you. You just got to own it and run with it. My life is serving the people. And in this case... It's taking care of people with cancer, and it's not an easy journey. I promise you, it's not easy. (laughs) They, I think everything of mine has been tested. Just how much you can care for one person. Mm. One thing that I forgot to mention was my church. (sighs) My church started donating food to the foundation, to the patients. This is Family Revival Life Ministry. Let me mm. not forget to mention them. One thing that I saw with that was that giving a person a slice of bread doesn't really do much for them. There was something else that they did. They would sit down with them and they'd share the word. And then they would get the parcels, whatever it is that the church had contributed then. They would walk away talking more about what they shared during the service than what they walked away with in plastic bags. Hmm. I don't know if you're getting my point. I'm I'm getting where you're going. Yeah. You know, it's that whole thing that what man man shall not live on bread alone. 
Thank you. They walked away encouraged. They walked away empowered. They walked away feeling that they are not alone, that they are people who are supporting them. They didn't just have that piece of bread to take home. They had something that they could go and meditate at home. Even if you can tell them God loves you, even in the situation that you're in, God loves you. That sticks in their mind and they appreciate the fact that somebody could take a minute of their time just to even share a single word with them. That is just how much when you're in a situation, you need any person that you bump into in the street, even if it's just for one second for them just to say, hi, how are you? <laughs> Guys, yes, when... Even when, when we, when you listen to how people used to talk about the word Ubuntu, let me, let me bring it home. Ubuntu. We've lost it. <laughs> We've lost it. We have so lost what Ubuntu means. And two words that we always seem to confuse. Sympathy and empathy. Yeah. Ah, oh, you can keep your sympathy. <laughs> Nobody needs our shame. And please, if you ever bump into a cancer patient, don't ever sympathize with them. Don't. They are way stronger than you think they are. Empathy. Put yourself in my shoes. Just for one second. Empathize. Don't sympathize. Sympathy has become an insult in today's day and age. That is why I'll give with a camera. I'm sympathizing with you, but I'm getting something out of it. But empathy, empathy hits you in the gut, in the soul, because it's real. For a minute you are me, and therefore you are able to feel my pain. You are able to know my thoughts. You are able to, re to relate to me on all levels that no other person has. Only when you empathize with me will you be able to say, I'm sorry and mean it. <laughs> I'm going to ask this question. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do differently from today? I know for one that I have always just been a person that says that when I am ready, I will assist Gia. When I am ready... I will join hands with Gia. FYI, he's still not ready. But <laughs> here's the thing. And, and this is real. This is real. This is a real. I don't think I'm ever going to be ready. Yeah. I'm never going to be ready, Gia. To assist you in how... <laughs> think you're supposed to be I'm never going to be ready so having said that we need to stop trying to look for and this is one thing that our chairman and pastor always says that you're never going to be in a state of absolute readiness just start get up roll your sleeves up and if it means carrying the bags of your fellow man, that's what you do. If it means sweeping their front yard, that's what you do. Picking up the piece of paper, that's what you do. Your little goes a long way. And as much as this conversation has centered around cancer and how it has affected your life, but I think the real lesson that I am drawing from this is let's be there for one another. Let's assist each other. <laughs> let's put down the cameras, guys. Truly and honestly speaking, let's put down our phones. Let's stop trying to document every little good deed that we do just so that, um, you know, when the hashtag random good deeds does start trending, that I have something to post about as well. Let's stop living our lives that way. There's somebody who's in need right now. And I'm not talking about need of a new pair of shoes or need of the latest gadget 
or need of an extra million rand. There's somebody who is in need of a hug. There's somebody who's in need of a hello. A genuine, how are you today? Somebody is in need of that conversation. Just do it. Just, just do it. You know, you mentioned Ubuntu. Ubuntu is me being there and going out of my way to assist you and not to expect anything in return. You know, not to keep a score or a journal that at this time, on this date, I assisted you, Gay. And when you come back, it's, oh, you're out of favors with me. No. I need to do for you and assist you in whatever way that it is. Let the universe keep score of your good deeds, not you. It's not about you. I'm going to reiterate this. Your strength, <laughs> your persistence, your, persever your perseverance, it is unmatched. You are <laughs> the true embodiment of the chosen one. If ever somebody wanted to have a true experience of that whole biblical thing that we're the chosen generation, we're the chosen ones, you know, we're the chosen children of God. This is you, what you've been through, what you are going through, and for you to still persist and stick at it. Greater is coming your way. I don't know what that is, but greater is coming your way. Bafenza is going to assist more people than what you thought it would than what you've ever planned it would and the title never got to tell my story <laughs> look at me and the title never got to tell my story still resonates with me because there are many people who never get to tell their story there are many people who don't have this opportunity and I think it is on us to ensure that they get to tell their stories. Just to add on on that, when it comes to never got to tell my story. <laughs> there are so many untold stories out there. Yeah. And it's beautiful stories. It's beautiful stories. It's stories that will have your heart melt it's stories that will change the next individual just listening to it and that is where it came from i pictured bitumela not being able to tell her story before i knew that she wouldn't be able to and i thought if her story is never told what's gonna happen who will know who will know this so with that being said, never got to tell my story. It's, always, it's also a sentence to encourage. Don't be like those who never got to tell their stories. Tell it while you still can. Yeah. Diarize every day. Write it down. Have a little notebook. Write down your journey. Don't let your story go untold. You may think that it's just a simple story. But to the next person, it could be a life-changing story. You are significant. Your story is significant and could be helpful to another. Don't overlook it. Don't look down on it. That is the beauty of what I've found with every individual who is suffering with cancer that I've come across. I learned that with them. If all of them were to tell their stories, I wanted Bidumela to be the last to say, I never got to tell my story. So now, let's break the chain of not being able to tell them. Let's tell them now. Let's tell them now. Let's yeah. tell our stories. I'm telling my story. I'm telling my story. And part of my story was with Dumel. She played a big part in my story. 
And if you read my story, you'll find probably her dominating because she built up a character in me that not even I knew existed. Her story encouraged my story. So you know what? Tell it, Pubs. Tell Pubs a story about where he is and how he got to where he is and everything that he had to go through to get to where he is today. Tell that story. Tell it. I know it's <laughs> it sounds so insignificant, but just tell it to the next person. I maybe have the have a dream of being part of radio one day. You telling your story of your perseverance and what you had to go through, all the challenges that you encountered, I take something from that. And I persevere because you did. Let's break the chain of untold stories. That's where Never Got to Tell My Story actually comes from. <laughs> you are... So favored, it's not even funny. As I said, I am never going to be ready. <laughs> so I'm not going to wait for me to be ready. And in closing, you are never going to be in a state of absolute readiness. Trust me. It's never going to be perfect for you to assist the next person. You are never going to have enough money for you to start giving to those who need. You are never going to have enough resources for you to start feeding those who need. In this instance, here's a young lady who her world got flipped upside down <laughs> at a very tender age. And she started giving and assisting and helping with all that she had. And she still trusts till today that she'll be able to do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So we are never going to be ready. I'm never going to be ready. And I am not going to try to emulate what Kia has done, or what Kia is doing. I have my own gifts, you have your own gifts, you have your own talents, you have your own means and ways. Use that to assist the next person. If for you, you've been given the gift of the gab, talk. Use that to make somebody else's journey much easier. Um, there are those who are camera shy, who are <laughs> shy of the mic and whatever it may be. If you're that person that can tell their stories, you do that. There are those that can't, that can't write for whatever reason. Assist them to write their stories. There are those who cannot do for themselves. Do for them. Assist them in any little way that you can. And I think we're being very spiritual and religious today. <laughs> Sticking with that, well, here's, here's, here's one thing that has always st that has stuck with me. When you take care of God's business and when you take care of his children, he takes care of you. So do that. Take care of his business. Take care of his children. And he will take care of you. And I'm seeing that with you. You're well taken care of. Everything of yours is sorted, dude. Um, I know you're planning a huge thing for Buffins. Yeah, very soon. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna discuss everything, and then we'll let it all out cool. once we have final dates and everything. But um, the next cancer awareness program is coming to hit the waste round again. We're going on a bigger scale, sure, and we're making a bigger difference. And we're just reaching out to everybody out there. Come and be a part of it. And we just we don't want to limit it just to the waste strand. I started there because that's where I come from. It's home for you. It's home. You know, yeah, let's start at home. Let's start at home and then grow. Yeah. 
Once it grows, we go to all the other places and we continue on to make a difference there. I still do say, and I've said this to you before, and I'm going to repeat it. I don't get involved in campaigns. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I personally don't get involved in campaigns because I feel they have a lifespan. Yeah. Very short lived. So let this way of life, let this lifestyle, let this movement catapults and just let it be <laughs> that catalyst, you know, to bigger and better things. But I think at the end of the day, for you, it is fulfilling what you started out with Bitumelo in your mom's kitchen on the 9th of July, 2013. Yeah. Yeah? That's the personal side for you. That is a personal mission, mission for you. But I think, once again, the challenge is get to know as much as you can about cancer. Find out all what you can about the cancer. And do remember, it can and it will be beaten. It can and it will be beaten. Yeah, thank you so much. Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, not really. You <laughs> made me talk about this. <laughs> Huh? I don't like you much right now. <laughs> I don't like you much. Oh, man. I said we're going to leave it for today, man. Um, yeah. It was half a grand day. <laughs>